Do you like scary stories? Yeah. Do you like scary stories to tell in the dark? Yeah. Do you like Guillermo del Toro? Del Toro? You don't actually like Guillermo del Toro because he made Shape of Water. Oh, for goodness sake. Oh, for goodness sake. But he made Pan's Labyrinth. The Peter really... Pan one? No, not the Peter Pan. The sort of uh, gothic horror film, Spanish horror film. Oh, yeah. He's got good horror bones. And he made that film that I saw in America that was called Crimson something or other. Crimson Peak. That's it. There was a lot of blood in that film. Did you ever see that? I never saw it, but I saw like bits from it. Yeah, that was the first time I went to see a film in LA at the Cinerama Cinema. And when I got back and told you, you said I'd essentially dumped you. Yeah, because I always turned down friends to watch films with you because you wanted to see them with me. And then you just went and saw a film I wanted to see with you by yourself. But it was an 18, so you couldn't have seen it. Still. In my defence. In my defence. But I don't do that anymore. You're the one who dumps me for friends. When have I ever dumped you? She might dump me for Dumbo. Anyway, this, we're not here to talk about Dumbo, we're here to talk about horror stories. <laughs> and horror stories, we love them. We are, I'd like to think we're almost specialists in the genre. Yes. I'd say that Maddie Adderley, to my left here, is a horror aficionado. Sounds really posh, doesn't it? Aficionado. Aficionado basically means it's a fish slash commando. It means you dive in and you beat things up. So this is Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. I've commented on this and posted things for this on uh, our Popcorn Junkies Movie Club Instagram account. Check it out. It's so cool. And I have one loyal follower on that, on that channel that comments on everything I post. And do you know who it is? Me. Her. And I'd like you to join us. Um, so yeah, this is three stories. That, this is based on three stories by an American author called Alvin Schwartz. Apparently he's very famous in America. Oh. Which is a bit like that Stuart Little book. That wasn't big here, but that's big in America. You know, Stuart Little with yeah. the mouse. Yeah, he didn't write that. But you know how there are certain oh. stories that are big in America? I love that, the films there. I love Stuart Little, yeah. But this is Alvin Schwartz. <laughs> and he writes sort of horror books, which are like folk tales and urban legends. And I think something that you might quite like about this film is it's not that the book's frightening or are horrific. It's that the book becomes you or something. There's something very weird about the reading of a horror story, and so it sounds a bit sort of meta. <laughs> Did you hear that? Yeah. It sounds like the roof's going to fall on us. <laughs> I, love, I love towns like that. This town has told stories about me. So this is by Gil. Gil Horrible Gil. stories. He wrote a story. But they don't realise. Tell me a story. Not Andre Overdoll. Oh, listen, Somewhere Over the Rainbow. I like the twist on that. Sarah Bellows' book. The stories write themselves and it all comes alive. You don't read the book. The book reads you. The book reads you! Ooh. I'm afraid I'm gonna die, Jeff. Or next. Or next. Bloody hell! I didn't know that underneath every zit there was a fucking monster waiting to come out. That means I've got loads of monsters. Oh, you haven't. Your uh, zits are going. We're zapping your zits. Okay. That looked kind of funky. I tell you what, at the beginning I wasn't too sure. No, neither was I. I felt like it looked a lot like a Netflix series or something. It looked like Riverdale. And the, the, like, the voice, the narrator at the beginning was, sounded really cringy. I agree. Um, but then when it got all those creepy looking things, it looked really kind of indie. Didn't it did, it looked... Indie, well, no, no, I know what you mean. It did yeah. look indie. They, they were really innovative. Weird. That's what Guillermo del Toro is good at, though, is the creaturey stuff, apart from forget wet yeah. flappy guy from Shape of Water. Oh, yeah. But, you know, in Pan's Labyrinth, it's so good. Yeah. So good. Oh, yeah. Well, from the, the clips I've seen from Crimson, and peak yes those things looked very like there's like yeah. a horrible red skin 
Skeleton. And, oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Crimson Peak, and one of them looked really like. Do you know who the globulous, flobulous, blobby oh, thing? Horrible. That reminded me of Suspiria. Do you remember the woman yeah. with the baby arms hanging off um, it? What was her name? Oh. Oh, it's something oh, horrible. She was horrible. a bit icky and a bit mucky. Mama. Yeah, Mama something. But I like the creatures. Like, what about the girl with the. And I like that whole sort of playing with the Wizard of Oz. Um, yeah, she was a bit Dorothy like. She was a bit Dorothy like. I wonder if she has to click her heels together and say, There's no place like death. <laughs> There's no place like coffins. I didn't know what you could say to that. Yeah, so did I. I was worried. Sometimes I open my mouth and I don't know what's coming. Yeah. Out. Yeah. Uh, I thought that looked quite good. I'm going to give that a go. And I don't know if you noticed this guy that turned his head like that and then the door opened. Yes. The guy who turned his head like that yes. was the one from that Ben Stiller film where it's him and his son. Oh, is he the son? He's the son, yeah. Oh, we liked him. Yeah. Yeah, he's good. Uh, what about the seat? Yeah, what do you think's good. in there? Actually, you know what? I, I always have a problem when films like that. So you see, like all those kinds of yeah. weird creatures that were walking, and you could tell yeah. in a good way that they were costumes and that they were made and everything. I have a problem when you have something like that pimple, and then there's that special effects thing coming out of it. I just have a problem. I feel like it's going to turn into some big CGI. Oh mess. right. So you think it's quite innovative it's with the creatures? It's better when they keep it simple and like. Right. Not. I thought it looked CGI. just like a hair. I, I'm. I've always been well, banging it's like on. A little it. hand. Was it? Something like that. I've always been banging on about this short horror film that was one of my inspirational films when I was a film student called The Kitchen Sink, where she finds a hair down the bottom of a plug hole and she pulls it and she pulls a man out, the creature. Yeah. creature. It looked like that, but it starts with something like that. And I've got a feeling that what she'll do in the film is she'll pull it and as she pulls it, it'll keep coming. Yeah, I mean, no, it looked good, but I, I liked it more when it just kept <laughs> being really weird. Do you and some... I felt that kind of yeah, okay. I've didn't got you. sit well with the rest of it. I sometimes wish I could, now, like right now, I want to be able to do that thing that they do in the Pet cemetery trailer where they go... Oh, yeah. How do know? they actually do that? I think they just... Do they speed oh, it up? God, that really hurts. Yeah, I think they just move like I move then. Well, obviously not. Oh, 